Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a 3D Endless Runner in Unity and welcome to episode 18. In this tutorial we're going to use a little bit of optimization and we're going to get rid of the sections that we have already ran over and no longer need. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in the series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So before we really dive into it, just a quick reminder that if you want to play this game, what we're creating here, you can on my Itch.io page. Link is in the description of this video. If you head over there, you'll find your way to Itch.io. You'll find the Timmy and Mousy game. So I think I've said it many times in this tutorial series that what we're creating here is actually a full fledged game on itch.io fully complete and you can get source code to it on there if you want to but i would recommend following along with this series it's much more fun than just downloading the code anyway so what we're going to do is if you remember we have a couple of different sections here and i can't remember if i said um, many many tutorials ago why we keep them all the same but there is a reason and this is the reason this tutorial right here why we do have them all named the same it makes things a lot easier in the long run so how do we do it? Well, it's easy. All we need to do is after a set amount of time, destroy the game object. Now the clever thing is we can't have a script on here that just says destroy after so many seconds because it'll destroy the original piece itself. So these will no longer exist in the game. We can only destroy the ones we have created after the level has begun. So if I press play now, we need to make it so as these clones all disappear and only these clones. Uh, while I'm here though, I think I am going to change the code to create certain sections. Uh, so if we go to generate level script, I think it is too frequent. So currently we have it set as two seconds and I'm thinking I'm going to change that to six seconds, at least just for now. A lot of this kind of stuff you'll find is mainly down to timing and how well we can time the different parts of code. For example, how long do we really need some of these sections to last for? Well, we can work that out later in the series, but as long as we get a general gist of what's happening with this piece of code, it doesn't really matter. So let's create a script to allow us to destroy those objects. So let's go to scripts and environment and right click, create C sharp script. And we can just call this something simple, let's just call it destroyer. And let's open that up in Visual Studio. So we need to keep the uh, update method and we can get rid of the start method. Uh, we do need a variable in here though uh, and that is going to reference um, basically the, the name of the object that the script is attached to. So we can say public string and parent name semicolon. So what this will do is it will return the value of whatever the object is called. And obviously, if that object is called a certain something, i.e. section and in brackets clone, then we destroy the object after a certain amount of time. So what do we do inside the update method? Nice and simple. We say parent name is equal to transform dot name. So that means that this variable is now equal to whatever the object is called. So that means that we have to start a coroutine now, and that coroutine is going to be what determines us destroying an object. So let's go a little further down underneath the update method, and we'll have I enumerator, and we can just call this destroy clone. and open close bracket and open curly bracket. And now what we'll do is we will wait for a certain amount of time. And like I say, this is all about timing. So it kind of depends a little later on how much time we need so as it never kind of disappears on screen. You'll get what I mean as we kind of play this code out. So let's have for now, for testing purposes, yield return new wait for seconds. I'm actually going to have this set as 10 just for now so we can see visually that this piece of code is working and all those clones that we've created are being destroyed. So what it will mean is that 10 seconds after creation of that section, it will destroy itself and no longer be part of the game. 
By then, hopefully we would have already run over it, obviously with the correct timings. So we now need to put if, and in brackets, parent name equals, it's double equals, and in quotes, the name of that object. So if I head back to Unity, we have it called section. And if you remember earlier in this tutorial, when we start, it says section, and then immediately in brackets, it says clone. So we need it to say that. So section, and in brackets, clone. And remember, capitalization is always important. And open curly brackets. So if it is equal to that, we just say destroy, and in brackets, game object with a semicolon and save. So remember I said every section has to be called the same. Well, it would just kind of make it easier because if you have uh, section one, section two, section three, section four, you'd have to make several different if statements for each section number. Whereas here, we could just have one single line of code. Now I know this may not be the best way of doing it, there's always better ways of doing anything in video games, even AAA games. But for all intents and purposes, we've got something cool working here. So next, what we need to do is on all three sections that I, well, I have three sections. You might have more by now. Hopefully you do have more. Uh, on all of those, we just need to add the destroyer script. So each section now has destroyer. So like I say, these particular second sections, I should say, won't destroy simply because they're not called section clone but the other sections will now i need timmy to kind of keep running in this so we can see this in action so i am going to temporarily disable the uh, box collider on timmy just so he can run through objects and we can see this in action uh do you know what i will do i will turn my volume down a little bit for this so let's press play and let's head back to our scene view and we should be able to see this actually doing something correctly. So you can see our first clone, second clone created. Oh, that's not gone to plan, has it? Tell you what, it doesn't really matter. Because, nope. Okay, that really didn't go to plan. Let's do this uh, a little better now, shall we? So what's basically happened is that Timmy has decided he is going to collide with things. So I wonder if I can actually move Timmy upwards for now and let him run in the sky. That will do for now. So let's just make sure that this works. So hopefully within 10 seconds, this clone should disappear. I'm hoping it will anyway. And it doesn't look like it has. So obviously there must be a problem with our code. Can anyone guess what it is? Yep, I've made that mistake before. Ha! <laughs> it's the, the coroutine. We haven't actually initiated it. So start coroutine. That's a classic Jimmy Vegas mistake. Oh, it's, it's what, I think it's probably the most common one I make. I always forget to initiate that coroutine. Never mind. Anyway, we just need to put it in there. Destroy clone. Oh, close bracket, close bracket, semicolon and resave. So before we go any further, let's just kind of go over what this code is doing. So we're first getting the name of the object and then we're starting the coroutine as soon as this uh, object starts. And now I think about it, I don't think we should have this as update. I think we should probably have this as start. So let's change that to start. I don't think it really makes too much of a difference, but at the end of the day, it could be a case of it constantly trying to run this script over and over. So let's keep it as start. Uh, so we initiate destroy clone. So that means after 10 seconds, if the parent name, which is the object name, is section clone, then destroy it. So finally, let's head back to Unity. And let's press play. And we should actually see all of this in action now. So yes, I know Timmy is floating, but this section clone should disappear in a couple of seconds. There we go. So it has indeed disappeared. So obviously if we go back to game we can see Timmy is well running into the wilderness but every time a section is loaded in 10 seconds later it will. So essentially what we've got to do is keep a constant flow of Timmy in this section 
all the time. So you can have a couple of sections ahead, but yeah, you can see where this is going. This means that, for example, if we're somewhere here, we've not got all of those clones that we've created previously. We've just got the section that Timmy is running in. And again, like I said, that's all about timing. So while we're at it, let's see if we can get the timing a little better than what it is. Uh, let's put Timmy back on the ground for now and maybe just lift him up a touch just so he doesn't collide with anything and let's see how far we can go and get this timing correct so level control let's go into there generate level and we'll generate uh, a new section every we did have it as two didn't we so we'll do it every six seconds so let's change it back to two just for now save it and let's head to destroyer and we'll destroy a section after let's say 30 seconds and let's head back into unity press play so yeah we can see all those sections ahead being built don't worry we will be able to kind of make it so as you can't see sections suddenly popping in in the distance but like I say, essentially what we're going for here is just so we can get a constant flow of how this looks. And eventually all of this will be tied to the speed that Timmy or Mousy or whatever your character is running at. So we're still going for now. These sections up here should start disappearing any moment. If I go to the scene view, hopefully we should be able to see. Yes, so you can see them starting to disappear. But obviously Timmy is going far too slow. So they're disappearing much quicker than they should, really. So it may take a little bit of work. It may take an increase in speed of Timmy. In fact, should we try increasing speed of Timmy? Uh, let's go to play a move. And let's see, move speed is currently set as five. And I'm sure I've mentioned it before that we are gonna change that a little later on. We're gonna make the speed a bit more dynamic. So let's have it as 10. And let's see how Timmy goes here. All right, so I think we may need to change it in this section here, won't we? Uh, so player and move speed, we'll have it as 10 there as well. And let's press play. There we go. So that looks a little bit better. So let's go to scene view. And let's just make sure that Timmy can indeed stay within the ranged section. As I say, it's all about you creating the perfect timing measurements for your game. And like I say, when we get to a more dynamic speed, you'll be able to make it so much better. So perfect. Timmy's running nicely. No problems at all. And they should start disappearing. Yep, there we go. So Timmy is now nicely inside these sections. Yep, and I know it's disappearing. Don't need to worry too much. You could always counter that by increasing the destroyer time. So let's have that set as 50, for example. And honestly, it won't matter if you've got, let's say, I don't know, 50 or 60 sections all in the game at once. It really isn't going to make a difference, even on mobile. You've got to remember, mobile devices are much more powerful these days. So this is going to be the final test that we do. And obviously, like I said, the faster Timmy goes, the easier it is to kind of work out the timing. So we've got about 35 seconds till the sections start disappearing. And yep, that was silence for longer than I would have liked. I like to ramble, remember? Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, cool. So any second now, the sections should start disappearing. You can see that we have all those clones there. Once they do start disappearing, there is a limit to how many clones will exist in the scene. And I think it's probably going to... There we go. So that's the amount of clones that we've got in the scene. We'll never have more than this amount of clones right now. And that is well within Timmy's range of running. So yep, yeah, that is all good. So finally... Um, I'm going to go back to Timmy. Let's bring him back down to the ground. 
Uh, one other final measurement that you can play around with and change if you're not quite happy is the generating speed. Like I said, we have it set as, what did I set it as? Where's the script? I've lost the script. Let's get it from here. Level control and generate level. Uh, we have it set as two seconds. So I would recommend probably having that as round about maybe five, at least for now. But play around with these numbers. Okay, so next tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to still incorporate what we've done here, uh, getting rid of those excess sections, but we're going to incorporate an increase in speed with Timmy. So the further he runs, the faster and faster he gets. So until that next tutorial, guys, thank you very much for watching.